Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Madison Charlton from MLC Tech. Now CS is already off to a fantastic start today with a jam-packed announcement from AMD detailing a bunch of new Zen 4 APUs while also seeing a revival of the AM4 socket. So sit back and relax as we dive into all the new announcements from AMD today. To kick things off, AMD has announced a new line of 8000 series desktop processors. Despite jumping up to 8000, CCPUs are still Zen 4 based, but the main difference is, is that CCPUs are going to be jam packed full of some new IDNE 3 GPUs. To form what AMD coins as an APU, which is when the CPU and the GPU is put together on the same package. Now we've already seen AMD integrate RDNA 3 and Zen 4 cores before on mobile series processors, but they are finally crossing over to the desktop. So the APUs we are getting this year, it consists of the Ryzen 7 8700G, which has eight cores and 16 threads, and up to 5.1 gigahertz boost clock, packaged with AMD Radeon 780M graphics with a TDP of 65 watts. We're also getting the Ryzen 5 8600G, which is a six core 12 thread variant, but this is packed with the 760M, so a slight downgrade on the graphics. We're also getting a Ryzen 5 8500G, which is the same core design, but with a slightly downgraded graphical processor having a 740M instead. And we're also getting a Ryzen 3 8300G, which is a four core, eight thread part with the 740M graphics. Though it's important to note that we're not going to get the Ryzen 3 at retail. This part's only going to be for OEM devices only. So you're going to have to buy a pre-built machine if you wish to get a Ryzen 3 8300G. When it comes to this product launch, the most important thing isn't so much the CPU core design. We've already seen the great performance that Zen 4 can offer us on CPU cores. But the important thing this time around is those integrated graphics. At AMD's keynote, they revealed some expected performance that we can get out of these APUs. They are claiming that the 8600G is expected to outperform the i7-14700K by a factor of 1 to 3.4 times in 1080p low gaming. And then the 8700G is also expected to deliver great gaming performance with an estimate range of 1.1 to 4 times higher than the 14700K. But it is important to note that the i7-14700K does have integrated graphics, but the integrated graphics on the 14700K weren't so much tailored for high performance graphics, unlike these new APUs here. We're gonna have to wait for Intel to launch and show off their new Meteor Lake CPUs, which are expected to be bundled in with their Intel Arc graphics. So it will be interesting to see how Intel responds to these new APUs. But AMD did also make some actual fair and real world comparisons for these APUs. For example, AMD is comparing the 8700G to a system with an i5-13400F coupled with a NVIDIA 1650 desktop graphics card. And no, we're not comparing to other integrated graphics cards. This is the full-blown desktop version of this GPU, which I think is absolutely impressive that they've been able to cram that much power on one single APU. And with a total TDP of 65 watts, the efficiency on the 8000 series is absolutely insane. And AMD also confirmed the pricing of these new APUs. The Ryzen 7 8700G will retail at $329. The Ryzen 5 8600G will debut at $229. And the Ryzen 5 8500G will be $179. I strongly believe that these APUs are going to be a great value for money and will also revolutionize the space of small form factor PCs. I strongly believe that having APUs at this price point significantly lowers the barrier to entry when it comes to getting into PC gaming and I strongly think that picking up a system with one of these chips in there would be a pretty tempting choice opposed to going with something like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. I'm very excited to see just how these chips will perform and the prospects of welcoming more people into the PC gaming space. AMD is also traveling back to the past to the land of AM4. Now we thought the AM4 socket was dead, but no, AMD keeps reviving the AM4 platform to bring even cheaper CPUs to the market. The AM4 socket was introduced all the way back in 2016, so it's pretty great to see how eight years later AMD is still supporting the AM4 socket. 
we're getting a total of four new AM4 CPUs. And amongst these new CPUs, we'll find two eight core CPUs, either with or without X3D vCache. And we're also getting a GT line of CPUs, which is set to bring strong competition in the budget segments. So we're gonna be seeing a Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, which is an eight core 16 thread apart, with a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz and 100 megabytes of X3D cache with 105 watt TDP. And we're also getting a Ryzen 7 5700. And that will have an MSRP of 249 US dollars. We're also getting a Ryzen 7 5700, which is just an eight core 16 thread apart without the X3D cache but that will have a slightly higher core clock speed of 4.6 GHz with a retail price of 175 US dollars. Taking a look at the more budget side of things, we have a Ryzen 5 5600 GT, which is a six core 14 thread apart, 4.6 GHz max boost clock, 65 watt TDP, and has integrated graphics, though AMD is not really talking much about the Radeon graphics, so it's unlikely we're going to see the super powerful RDNA 3 GPUs on the GT line just due to how budget oriented they are. And we're also getting a Ryzen 5 5500 GT, which is a four core eight threaded part, 4.4 gigahertz max boost clock and a 65 watt TDP. In my personal opinion, that's a Ryzen 3 CPU though. AMD for some reason are so scared to bring back Ryzen 3 for just mainline desktop processors. I don't understand why, it will be very interesting to see how these new CPUs will affect the rest of the budget market as AMD are effectively bringing out a new CPU that competes with what they already have on the market. For example, the 5700X3D will go toe to toe in the same price point as the Ryzen 5 7600. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what CPU is actually better. Will the X3D bring significant uplifts in gaming that Zen 4 simply can't offer us? Or will the IPC of Zen 4 be enough to make this processor irrelevant? We can't really say for now until we actually have it in our hands and can perform some testing on it. But for now, I'm super stoked to see how these CPUs will fit into the rest of the lineup. All four of these new Ryzen 5000 CPUs will be available January 31st. So that was all that AMD had to show off on the CPU side at CES this year. I'm super excited with all they've unveiled today and quite frankly, I did not expect them to unveil this much. I was expecting their keynote to be mainly focused on their Strix Point mobile APUs, but I'm super happy and stoked with all of these new announcements and I can't wait to get my hands on some of these CPUs and see how they perform later in the year. But that's all we have for today. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Will you be interested in any of the CPUs announced today? And how do you think the Ryzen 8000 series will affect the APU market? And will this bring a resurgence of the small form factor PC at a low price point? I think it would be pretty cool with these new APUs if we could see a resurgence in something like a Steam machine, for example, which is a small form factor gaming box at a pretty decent price. Maybe we could see a resurgence in a product like that, but we can only speculate for now, but I am super excited for the future. Anyway, I have been Madison Charleston from MLC Tech. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Goodbye for now. Yeah.